Hello there, this is Aristos. I'm a WatchCard Information Security Instructor from Rich Intermediate Services. Hi everybody, how are you? This is the first episode of the troubleshooting and answering some of your questions that I'll be having from my students and my clients. You're going to be seeing more sessions like this one, short ones that will really drill into the problem that you're having for the specific issue. This issue today has to do with overloading the box. Some of the questions I've been having through email was why my box is getting slow? Why my users cannot access the website fast? Why and why and why? Well, it's all about this table here, performance table. For me, more or less, all the HTML boxes, except of the ports, of course, they have, uh, most likely are the same. It has to do, the big difference has to do with the performance table, with the firewall, VPN, AV, IPS, UTM, and concurrent sessions. So, I will explain each by each how this can overload your box. Firewall through output has been designed to do zillions of mathematical equations per second, per millisecond. Uh, it displays incoming and outgoing packages, uh, it displays traffic, uh, all sort of kind of uh, packages that try to penetrate your system or outgoing or policies or millions of other uh, things. So the firewall, especially of WashGuard, is not capable of uh, overload your box as such in a way that your user may be facing a huge uh, slow connection or slow uh, process and the reason is because WashGuard firewall as a firewall engine has been designed in a such way that is really a, its job to do all these millions zillions of mathematical equations uh, the only reason why a firewall the uh, firewall engine of the WashGuard will uh, make your process to be slow and they make, they make the box overload is if you're, for example, if you're running a report server or a log server and you have it up to the debugging mode, then yes, that can cause your box to be uh, slowed down, to be using a lot of CPU process. So I highly recommend, you know, do the debugging for, you know, simple things like, uh, you know, normal firewall procedures like uh, packages passing, you know, like HTTP traffic or SMTP traffic you don't need it if you don't have a reason to enable it so don't do it and you're gonna be freeing your box some you know some space to work with uh, then I'm going to the VPN through output VPN through output is used it doesn't use a lot of the process of the of CPU load of the box and because the nature of it is basically more uh, on internet connection, so uh, I don't think that you know many users will be having you know 100 megabps of connections or 240. Uh, you know, a VPN of WatchCard is be designed to use multiple complex ways to not overload the box. So I will not think that this is the reason why your box is getting overload. Now, uh, something that can get your box overload regarding the VPN is if you're using mobile VPN and you have a lot of users and you have ticked the option that uh, you want the box to uh, you know you want the VPN users to for the traffic to pass through the firewall that yes can increase the CPU load of your box therefore it will it will make an overall uh, notice to the uh, general uh, idea to the general usage of your users and they will notice you know some a bit uh, slow down things now the antivirus through output I don't think that can cause you know a huge delay uh, on the process of the box and how your uh, your users experience is, is, is getting along with and the reason is because you know antivirus scanning is being used only on HTTP traffic, on NSMTP traffic, and mostly on POP3 traffic. So uh, just by the nature of it, we're talking about the light, you know, traffic passing through. Even if you have a lot of emails coming, 
uh, an outgoing emails if you have a lot of HTTP sessions the only way, the only thing that the, your user might feel a little bit slow is on the HTTP depending on the scanning options you have chosen because scanning options are uh, uh, you know, it takes some time to do when you, for example, you click on a website the firewall needs to do the scanning, the HTTP scanning and then uh, deliver the results back to the user and allow it to view the web page so this is a normal procedure if you are taking the antivirus for the HTTP you will notice that the experience of the user is much faster but less secure but this it will not affect the overall situation of your box it will not slow down other services uh, which this is the issue that we are talking about now you know to be your box to have such an overload CPU that affects all services in whole of the box and making you know the life of the or users or clients extremely difficult. I will pass the IPS throughput and I will move to UTM. UTM is very similar traffic to the firewall one for the reason I have explained before. This yes can cause also if you have high debugging reportings and loggings to the to your report server. But again, overall, I don't think this can cause serious damage to your CPU, to the CPU load of your or wash card. Okay, this uh, section here regarding the concurrent sessions of uh, the XTM device, you know, this varies from model to model, okay? Uh, this is something that wash card is very proud of. The concurrent sessions that it's using is really huge, I mean, for the boxes. I doubt that anybody is going to be having, you know, any issues in concurrent sessions because specifically it's also there by we're talking about bi-directional uh, sessions uh, for example I have you know I have been using the 870 models the fiber ones uh, and really the traffic is that I have is so huge and the boxes you know they are just going free wheel they don't notice any traffic passing it's it's like nothing is happening you know so Washcar is proud of the concurrent sessions that they're using and the way they found to uh, to uh, to use and to benefit from the, the machine as itself. Now, I will move to IPS. IPS is really a reason I should worry about. It's the first thing you should look why your boxes are getting slow. It's because most probably you have overdone it with the IPS. I have seen layer 2 solutions, layer 2 networks that uh, they are using, they are taking the IPS uh, application, sorry, the IPS uh, service for outgoing traffic. I don't know why, it doesn't make any sense, don't do it. You just overload your box with excess traffic. On a layer 2, especially for traffic that moves externally, you don't need to filter with IPS your traffic, you just kill your box for out any reasons. Uh, but on the other hand, let's say you're an office, you're a big uh, company and you're providing hosting services internally, uh, you are renting offices, you have many offices inside your organization that they are rented to clients of yours uh, and you are using VLANs for different offices to uh, create separate networks, small networks within your organization. In such case, yes, you don't know who your user is behind the desk of that company or the other company. It might be you know, a hacker try to hack the rest of the people. So it's good to have the IPS enabled, but again, this it will uh, diminish the, the speed of your users. An example of that will be a policy like this from any trusted from any trusted to any external. This is really a simple HTTP traffic from your internal users to the outward world. It's no logic to have enabled the enable IPS for this policy for external traffic. So, best thing you have to do is to untick this. Now, if you want to enable the IPS, the only reason to enable the IPS 
for HTTP proxy policies is in a situation like this where for example you have an external traffic let's create an SNAT for example this here which is my internal mail server so from any external traffic that is not trusted to me a lot of people will try to penetrate inside my network to this a machine inside my DMZ I want to enable IPS for the policy so basically this is the only way the only reason you should enable IPS well this is the most common issue you should look first if you're running a slow box uh, most probably is something that you misconfigured or you have overdone it with the policies that we have just explained now. Thank you for listening to me. This is the first session of the troubleshooting we're going to do in different episodes just for you, for my students, clients, and whoever else is a washcard lover and he uses these credible machines. We're gonna, you're going to be seeing from me a lot from now on. Thank you. Chat with you soon. Bye.